Hello, uh, it's Noir Vortex here, and today I'm going to be talking a bit about um, a few different issues, really. Um, I'm just going to see where my own stream of consciousness takes me. I've got a few points to discuss, but I'm just going to kind of riff. Um, so, obviously, it's going to be quite a political video. I'm going to be talking about um, American politics at present. Donald Trump, uh, the recent riots that have been going on, and uh, protests, and the pro emerging protest movement, and uh, respond to some of that, and talk a bit about free speech as well, and um, I guess uh, liberal values and where the left's at, uh, as well as talking a little bit about. What is known today, I guess, is the alt right, and my perception of that, based on being online, because I'm kind of separated from it here, being in the UK. But anyway, so yeah, so I guess I'll just clarify my own political position, basically. First, so um, I consider myself the democratic left. Uh, British Labour tradition, I suppose. I'm a Labour Party member, um, so I vote Labour. Um, so socially progressive, uh, economically left, I guess as well in terms of like regulating business, regulating, uh, being involved, you know, being for trade unions, etc. Um, so naturally, given my politics, Donald Trump is um, somewhat. Is very much pretty much the opposite of a lot of that. He's quite isolationist in his policies. Um, I mean, obviously, he's working a lot of Russia and stuff and trying to forge some links up. You know, he's talked about wanting to have a relationship with China and all the rest of it. Uh, he seems a lot of his and obviously with the the banning of seven countries, citizens of seven countries being able to travel in the, into the country is quite isolationist in the sense of um, heavily controlling immigration I suppose um, I think in general his language is he's very free, you know, he kind of reduces very simple uh, complex issues into very simple sound bites which is politics in general to be but with a lot of politicians to be fair to him, it's not something that's unique to him but he seems to do it to a kind of end of degree I suppose which is not surprising I think Bush did the same you know saying the kind of culture wars against us versus the Middle East etc so not exactly surprising um, and he's well obviously he's very pro-business coming from a very business orientated background he's just been a businessman for the majority of his life hasn't he uh, a lot of the, his public statements have in terms of um, Muslims, this is quite worrying the way he uses language, and I'm I'm sure lots of people are going to say, well, uh, Islam is a um, it's a terrible thing and oppresses women and blah blah. It's a broad church. It's just like, and yeah, you can call me a cultural relativist if you want for saying this, but. Islam has got its liberal movements, it's very hard, kind of rigid movements in it and streams in it like any other religion. Judaism has that, Christianity has that. I kind of separate out in my thinking um, people having specific religious beliefs and um, that entire group. And uh, but I think that's what's getting lost a lot in American politics. At the minute, it's becoming too um, simplistic in the way that it defines others. Uh, I'll go on to that now, actually, because I'll talk a bit more. I'll just go to the real crux of what I want to talk about now, which is um, there was some at UC Berkeley. Um, Milo Yiannopoulos was due to talk. Now, Milo is um, a figure who is associated with the emerging alt-right in America, but I don't think he himself would identify as an alt-writer. But um, 
So he uh, is a technology writer at Breitbart. He writes a lot about feminism, against feminism basically, um, against left-wing movements, against um, safe space culture, etc., against the so-called social justice warrior movements in America primarily, and well, all over the world I suppose, but mostly westerns. Culture and yeah, he was due to do a talk at UC Berkeley and um, university, and a lot of protests happened to prevent him from speaking. Um, now, as a liberal, self-confessed liberal, kind of socialist, social democrat type, I am. I really don't see the um, point of not letting him talk or I mean a lot of fellow liberals I suppose will say oh that's hate speech and he's spreading his hatred through his speech and probably give the example of you can't you shouldn't just because you can shout fire in a crowded room doesn't mean you should but um and I have actually watched a lot of Milo's videos and I disagree with him on a lot of things. Um, I mean he has occasionally insightful things to say but often he is just, he seems to be kind of a provocateur and kind of playing to the crowd I suppose that likes what he says. Um, which probably does include quite a lot of the alt-right I suppose as well. Um, but yeah I don't think it kind of creates and feeds the caricature that um, Milo Yiannopoulos um, advances to say that the left are against free speech and are for shutting down debate. Just stopping him from talking doesn't achieve anything and in fact gives credence to his um, belief that the left is a you know, regressive against uh, freedom of speech, against freedom of thought, etc, etc, and it kind of gives power to this idea of the cliche that we're all kind of secretly uh, Stalinists who wish for this kind of u utopian, dysutopian communist society or whatever, which is, couldn't be further from the truth to be honest. Um, and I could, yeah, I know I'm kind of misrepresenting maybe potentially some of what he said or kind of... Um, exaggerating a bit for effect but you know what I mean so yeah basically the left um, and the left has to I think be more united on condemning this kind of thing and the left is a broad church again like any other movement like the right's a broad church I mean the right you've got everything from libertarians to um, you know kind of dodgy white power guys to Conser you know, traditional conservatives who want to conserve the existing orders and institutions. Uh, well, libertarians are obviously a bit more radical in that sense on the right, but uh, I mean, and actually, in, t in terms of libertarianism, I've actually got some. Um, I kind of some of the ideas from libertarianism in terms of like the socially kind of having a advancing social policy and you know, things like legalizing drugs, prostitution, and stuff. I'd probably be on board with, to be honest, a lot though. Or at least legalizing, regulating, and making it into kind of a business model, I suppose, in some ways. That'd be four, probably. Uh, but anyway, that's, just, that's an aside. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. Neither am I a fan of Milo, either, I've got to say. But these protests are just giving ammo, ammunition to the enemies of the left and will divide a divided nation already further and to be honest some of the behavior I've seen from um, protesters and I've only seen a few clips of the actual action violence that was taking place it's just despicable like I saw it there's a woman talking on the camera um, to a journalist I guess and just having a chat about what she thought about the protest what it wasn't really achieving what she had an America great cap on and some random person came up with just pepper sprayed her in the face it's just that's just that's the behaviour of that's just violent that's a, that's a violent assault actually and I, I hope the person that did that has been um, reprimanded and you know 
sorted out basically because it's just that I mean liberal liberal liberals in the broader sense of the word or the left have always traditionally ha been supposed to maintain the moral high ground and and yeah like I said it's a broad church so yeah it might have been like hard left anarchist or agitators I guess but it's just depressing to see this kind of thing happening and it I mean just from based on some of the online dialogue I've seen from people who are on the right and the further right it's uh, it will produce worrying reactions as well every reaction has a equal and opposite uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction so you know it's, it's just going to increase tensions it doesn't achieve anything a lot of the stuff protests I saw was just people dancing around to music and smashing like shit up for no reason I mean yeah well done smashing up a bunch of shops and smashing up some vending machines what does that prove it just proves well it proves nothing it's, it's completely ridiculous I mean you're venting anger but what does that achieve anyway it's not it just makes everyone think you're a bunch of fucking idiots. Because you are, actually, to be honest, doing such a thing. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, you can say, oh, it's hate speech. Trump is going to be shit leader, right? In my opinion, he's going to be very... Rub he's going to be a terrible leader. So many of the policies... I actually went on uh, protests in the UK against his uh, seven-country ban, etc., peaceful protest, um, very much for the Women's March um, protests that have been going on um, and all these other peaceful movements just to say we're not all for what he's doing and yeah sure he's, he's kind of got this nationalistic jingoism to his presidency which is incredibly worrying but I think at this point to call it fascism is kind of diluting down what that actually is he has, sure he has, if you look online, he has support from some on the alt-right who are, you would, could class as like, you know, kind of regressive white power knobheads, basically. But just because he has that support does not necessarily mean that he's a fascist. And if, like I said, basically the only point I'm making, just to finally wrap this up, is don't dilute that word by constantly calling him a Nazi, a fascist, all the rest of it. Yeah, sure, he's isolationist. He is putting some things in place. You know, he is kind of scapegoating Muslims at the minute, which is terrible, and I don't agree with it. And I, But he's more of like a... Well, it's hard to know what he is, really, because he's, he's a very like, pro-business, pro-strong state, controls and all the rest of it but I think it at this point and we do have to I think as the left we do have to stay on guard to keep on seeing what he's doing but at this point to call him a Nazi fascist is reducing that the value of that actual word and what it means as a genuine um, attack or critique on someone um, so I uh, apologise if this has been a bit rambling, but I just um, I've, I've have to, contributed a bit to one of the threads on the UC Berkeley um, protest Milo Yiannopoulos thing, so I just thought I'd respond to that because um, I've been having lots of discussion threads going on and I thought it would just be easier just to record a video, condense it all down into one probably 15 minute video now and then just put it out there put your comments below if you agree with me disagree with me um, I'm especially interested to see what moderate right wing uh, Republicans or any moderate right wing conservatives I guess think about this as well as um, those on the left do you agree that um, using these kind of black block methods are never really get us anywhere and that um, Sure, there's a legitimacy for protest, and even at this point as well, but um, this kind of very violent outburst is really getting us nowhere. Or do you do, do you disagree with me on that and say, I think that the need is a, it's a pragmatic thing to do? Um, so, yeah, it's been Noir Vortex. It's been my video 
on Donald Trump and the recent protests and etc etc. Cheers.